giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, fellow Firsters, and welcome to our second year of the Mouth of the South, your Southern Region Recap Show. We're very excited to be back and reporting on all the happenings from teams and events in the states of New Mexico, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Louisiana, Kansas, and of course, the Lone Star State of Texas. This year, we'll be covering 25 events and seeing what some of the best teams in the world can accomplish as they take on the mission of protecting First City in infinite recharge. My name is Marco Guerra, and I am excited to be back as one of your hosts for this year. I'm the drive coach for Team 3005 Robochargers out of Emmett J. Conrad High School in Dallas, Texas, and uh, this will be my seventh year with First. And I'm Nick Murray. Uh, this is my second year as a host on this show. Uh, I'm a mentor for Team 148, the Robo Wranglers, out of Greenville, Texas, and I also work as a mechanical engineering intern at Vex Robotics. Hey, everyone. My name is Michael Ray, and this is my uh, second year on the show as well. I am the head coach of 6800 Viper Bots Valor out of Austin, Texas. Uh, I was on Team Rush 27 from 2009 to 2013, and I work as an application engineer at ARM as an Internet of Things consultant. And I'm Colin Sherman, back again as a host. I'm an alumni of Team 1710 out of Olathe, Kansas, and I'm currently studying engineering physics at the University of Kansas. Rock chalk. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, let's get everything started, uh, guys. Uh, Infinite Recharge is almost upon us, so um, why don't we spend a little bit of time here at the top of the show talking about um, impressions of the game. What do we think? How, are we, how excited are we to go and uh, see this on the field here this weekend? Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, specifically, like I said earlier, I was on Rush from 2009 to, through 2013. So I got to see some of the cool uh, cycling games, uh, 2012 and 2013 come to mind there. Um, so I'm excited to see what I call the return of the cyclers. I'm hoping that a lot of these cycle bots come back into play and are just cranking through as many balls as they can through the trench run. Um, I know personally with 6800, 2012 had a lot of influence on our design decisions. Um, specifically because, you know, I, I lost to 341 and 254 uh, at Worlds in 2012. So I, I got to see some pretty cool cycle bots go through there. And I know we talked a lot about 341, 254, uh, 67 at kickoff when we were going through the game. So I don't know. Any of you guys have any points here on uh, some of the cycling stuff or uh, any other points here? You know, yeah, I, I think, think it... I think it's really cool, um, you know, as you mentioned with the cycler games of past, um, kind of coming into a more modern technology as well. Uh, like the fast feeding that came out of 2017, I'm sure has inspired a lot of different teams designs. So it'll be really cool to see the fast cycling element of, you know, 2012, 2013 games, as well as the fast shooting of like 2017 games. I think that'll uh, be you mentioned a really cool thing there. I think the climbing part was something that uh, needed to be hit on a little bit too. Uh, I personally think the climbing is going to be way over po uh, overpointed. We've already seen that in like the, I don't know, six hours of Israel district events that have gone on so far in the week zero stuff where um, a lot of the games are determined by these climbing, uh, like that last 30 seconds of the match. And three out of the last five years had pull up style bars for climbing. So I'm really hoping that a lot of teams will just kind of have climbing down pat, so it's up to the ball uh, ball scores. But so far, it's not really been um, super high on the list in terms of how many teams are getting their climbs out. Yeah, I'm also a bit um, wary about how the climb points are going to work out. Um, just like in 2017, the, the climb was worth so many points, and it kind of impacted the way that drafting worked out because of Serpentine. Um, the third robot and a lot of the top alliances um, couldn't climb. So that year, people did a lot of cheesecaking, but this year that's not as 
legal, I guess. Um, but some teams might uh, make use of buddy climbs to make that work out. Yeah, I think that um, yeah, I think you're spot on that the climbing is is a huge part of this game. I think the other thing too, in terms of what single item is going to uh, just swing a lot of matches for me, is just tech fouls. And you're seeing we, we've seen quite a bit of that in some of those early Israel matches with those protected zones. Um, it's very tempting to get very close when you're playing defense, and we know we'll see a lot of uh, of that aspect of it. So I think teams will need to be really careful. I think a lot of matches are going to be swung uh, because of that, and in that end game too. I mean, that rendezvous zone with six robots trying to get in there and trying to get parked and climb and everything else is just a mess right now and it's so easy to go over it's, it's a lot smaller and, and at that distance with adrenaline flowing um i think we're just gonna i'm, I'm hoping we don't but i think we're going to see a lot of free climbs and tech fouls and things like that that are going to be um, moving a lot of matches and rankings around early on hey marco just a, a question i guess on this and anyone can answer but um in terms of this year, with all these fouls being played, is it more or less important to keep track of these in your scouting databases? And how will scouting be impacted by the, you know, by all these fouls that are occurring? Yeah, I think that that's going to be huge, especially early on. And I think that you're right in that some of this kind of works itself out as the season goes on. Teams get better at climbing, get more consistent in their lineups. But I think early on, I, I know for us, we've definitely added defense and some sort of ability to track not just defense, but fouls and how that's going. Um, you know, you can say that's some of the things that can clean up easily. Uh, you know, you, maybe a rookie team or a new team, you can say, hey, let me let me talk to you about what areas not to go into the field. But we all, we've all know, um, you know, as a drive coach, that that's a lot easier said and pre-match yeah. than when the things are actually live. So I, I do think it's important to know what teams seem to understand the game and understand what will flow and where they should and shouldn't be. Um, and that will definitely play, I think, into a lot of teams' uh, alliance selections. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, um, it, it's interesting right now. Uh, one of the stats that we've noticed um, after watching Israel is, you know, climbs are obviously winning matches here. But on the ball scoring side, which most would consider i think given that's the majority of the match it's kind of underwhelming currently um the average amount of points coming out of auton is actually uh, from power cells is actually higher than uh the amount of points coming from power cells in teleop which like makes sense because the scoring is doubled but it also means teams aren't making like any shots in teleop given you're limited there's a pretty much hard cap on how much you can score in Auton. Most teams are scoring three balls in Auton, and that's worth more than the six. They'd have to score six more balls um, and tell you off to match that, and they're not hitting that. Now, I get it's week one, but and I expect that number to go up, but it's kind of the amount of balls being scored in Teleop is lower than I expected this early on. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm really interested in seeing like where teams choose to shoot during teleop. I know a lot of teams are really gung ho about trying to get the three quarters field shot, thinking that would reduce their cycle times, or even shooting from the trend zone. But it seems like if teams are scoring this little, they probably would have been better off going up right against the goal and shooting little layups, because that seems like that's the most high percentage shot right now. Yeah, I mean to that point, how long do you guys think it will be before we see anybody? really caring about rotational or positional control in this week's in this year's game i, I don't i thought from the beginning it wasn't going to occur until pretty late in the season uh you got to score a lot of balls in order to get to, to that level and i and if unless you have like full score full court shooter fender shooter combo um that are both really good at what they're doing i just don't think you're hitting enough balls to get to that point at least until states or worlds mm-hmm. i think teams yeah. were a little overconfident in their analysis and uh, it's a little trickier than people thought. What about defense? Do you guys think that we're going to see the impact of defense as heavily as we saw it last year's game? I don't think so. Because, I mean, last year you had, like, massive choke points um, where you could just park a team in that area in front or in between the cargo ship and the rocket, and you could just kill an entire alliance's scoring on that side of the field pretty much. This year, yeah. there are a lot of different areas that robots can go in. Like, oh, you're blocking our trench run. Okay, we're going to go through the center of the field. Okay, you're messing around in the center of the field. We're going to go in the trench run. And there's a lot, the field's a lot more open, and therefore the defense shouldn't be affecting it as much. But yeah. they are going to see more like high speed collision teams because um, 
it's easy for teams to go full sending it down the field into, Mm -hmm. you know, the robot that, you know, is scoring points or what they could perceive as scoring points um, on the other side. Yeah, I'm going to go back to 2012 again, just because, you know, I'm on that kick. Uh, 2012 (laughs) defense was a thing, but not nearly as much as, you know, what we've seen the last year. Um, Same with, I guess, cycling games like 2013 as well. It, It has an impact, but it's not nearly as close. Um, and I guess, Marco, maybe we should start talking about our next uh, part of the show here. Yep. Yeah, perfect. So um, obviously we're all looking forward to see how this game uh, plays out and the evolution of, of what uh, that will be as teams continue to iterate and improve. So um, before we get into uh, previews uh, for the events scheduled this week, why don't we put on our prognosticator caps here and see who we think will have a strong enough showing over the weekend to earn themselves a spot on next week's FRC Top 25. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and start off here. Uh, Marco will probably be pretty excited to see that I have 3,005 as my team. Um, you know, they have been on a constant rise since 2016. Now, I believe they were division finalists in 16. They had a very strong gear runner in 2017. 2018, you know, they were a the second overall pick in the division. Last year, another really strong robot. Um, so I'm expecting 3,005 to come out at Greenville. Uh, they're a top three team, in my opinion. We'll get more into that later at Greenville, um, and they have a really good driver. Uh, you know, I got to see the driver at TRI this year, and I was very impressed with what I was seeing. Um, so I'm very excited to see 3005 up close and personal this weekend at Greenville. Yeah. Well, uh, bringing that back, I guess, to Austin, I'm going to go with my prediction of 2468, Team Appreciate. Um, they're coming off a really strong 2019 season. Uh, their robots keep getting faster, smaller. They're kind of learning from that meta and taking it to the next level. So uh, I really think that they're going to hit the top 25 sooner rather than later. Uh, they now actually have a second team. They have Team Apprentice. Uh, so that's the, where their freshmen and their sophomores are, are, are going to, and that's going to become their, their feeder team. So I think having two teams now will actually help them um, as they're able to kind of take from the, the lessons learned from Apprentice and apply them on Appreciate. Uh, they got new facilities on the way, too. So it's all kind of clicking in for 2468. I know they've been practicing for about one or two weeks now with their robot and kind of tuning things. And so uh, getting ready to see what they, they have uh, for this year's game. Awesome. So up at the Greater Kansas City Regional, uh, it would be easy to just say 1986 Titanium. But I'm going to go a little bit more bold and say 6886 is my pick for a little dark horse action. Um, they've been improving every single year. This year I've seen they've they picked up Swerve Drive from Swerve Drive Specialties. And over a week and a half ago they posted a little video of the robot putting up shots, which is a really good sign, especially two weeks before your first event, getting that much time to tune and improve. I'm looking forward to seeing them this weekend. Plus I just want to comment uh, that – their shop is at like a bowling alley arcade, mm-hmm. and that's freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I was just noticing that. I looked up and saw the, the, I was like, oh, this is the bowling alley team from last year. I remember their video from last year because of that. Yeah. Um, well, as for me, my prediction, I'm going to go with a team uh, out of the Fort Collins, Colorado area, team 4499, the Highlanders. Um, they're coming off of Einstein finalists two years ago, lost to the uh, mighty black and blue uh, winners, semifinalists at or better at all of their events last year, including Worlds. Um, we've got the opportunity to play with them um, at uh, Colorado and at Champs back in 2018. They always build very nice competitive machines, and I think that they are poised to come out, have a fast start to the season, uh, and uh, hopefully see them on the uh, top 25 list here uh, in a week. So now that we've put our money where our mouths are, let's learn a little bit more about what to expect during the three events that are happening in our region this weekend. Starting with the week one event, we're going to highlight this week, which is a trip over to the House of Black. Yep. So 40 minutes east of Dallas, 30 teams will be competing at Greenville High School in the first in Texas Greenville event. Now, the team leading the pack at Greenville this year is Team IFI Team 3310 Blackhawk Robotics. They currently have a nine regional slash district event win streak under their belt, and they'll be trying to take home their second banner from the House of Black. You know, they won the event last year Um, in Greenville. Nine is typically a lucky number. um, So we'll see if that holds true for 3310 at this event. Uh, And they can increase that uh, streak to 10. Um, Now, speaking of banners um, and medals from the Greenville event last year, team 2468 currently has the most with two. 
Last year, they ranked one and picked up 30 through 10 and took it all the way. On top of that, they grabbed the Engineering Inspiration Award. Now, I'm fully expecting 2468 to come out even stronger than they did last year. You know, they had a division finalist appearance. Uh, I believe they had two event wins. They had a very, very strong showing last year. Um, they also won two Texas off seasons, uh, beating bo- us at both. Anyways, um, so they're looking really good. Now, of course, with the new year, there comes a new team. Well, actually, for 2468, it comes with two new teams because they have team 2687 Team Apprentice, which is their rookie team, that'll be making their debut. I'm really excited to see what Apprentice comes out with and how close it performs to their veteran team, Appreciate. I think, on a little side note, I think it would be kind of hilarious if Apprentice came out and like won the event over Appreciate. I think that'd be a really interesting dynamic, um, kind of like bragging rights, per se, amongst the teams. That'd be really interesting to see. Now... Like I said, uh, like I said, last year, 30 through 10 and 2468 paired up to win the event. Um, and there are obviously going to be some teams trying to break up that from happening, happening again. And the first one that comes to mind for me is the Robo Chargers. Uh, we'll see if Marco can come out and break that up. Uh, you know, the Robo Chargers are coming out of Dallas. Um, they're coming off a very strong season, and they'll be looking to beat a two-year finalist streak at their first event. Um, so they finals at their first two events. Uh, 2018 and 19, and then another team that's looking to break up that top two is Team 2714 Barbecue. Um, so 2714 and 2005 partnered together to become finalists to Aust- at the Austin event last year. Um, so we'll see if they end up together again and attempt to take home the gold. Now, speaking of Austin, uh, Team 6377 Howdy Bots will be coming up. Last year, they were killer on the ranking side of things, ranking one and two at their two district events. They were, they were able to win one of their events last year, and I'm expecting Howdy Bots to be playing the RP game as strong as they did in the past, and they could potentially upset one of the top two teams for that top spot and maybe cause a wrinkle in, in what could be the top team's plans. Um, and then, of course, last but not least, we have Team 5892 Energy Heroes, um, who is going to be trying to follow up arguably their best season yet where they brought home a event winner banner from the channel view event last year they came out really strong last year at their first event and we'll see if they bring that same level of competitiveness to their first event this year now on the culture side of things there are a lot of teams to watch out for three teams competing in greenville tacoma chairman's award from a district event last year first and foremost team 2468 picked up a chairman's at their first event and an ei at their second event as well as at district championship last year. 2468 is 100% the front runners here. But close behind them are teams 4206 Robo Vikes, who picked it up at the Dallas district event last year, and team 5417 Eagle Robotics, who picked up a chairman's award at a district event last year. Now, a chairman's dark horse for me is team 3310 Blackhawk Robotics. They haven't picked up a chairman's award since 2017, but They've shown in the past that they can win chairmans, and I would be very interested to see if they bring back that competitive edge that they had on the chairman side of things this year. So I can't wait to see the teams that come out to Greenville this weekend, and I can't wait to show them how champions are built in Greenville. Now, there's a second first first in Texas district event this week. Michael, why don't you tell us about who we're going to have to look out for there? All right. Four hours south of Greenville, we will see the inaugural First in Texas Dripping Springs District event. Uh, for those of you longtime firsters, I want you to think back to the true multi-game cycling uh, cycling game in 2013, Ultimate Ascent. That year, 1241 Theory 6, 610 Crescent Coyotes, and 1477 Texas Torque went on to win the world championship in St. Louis. Uh, last night, 610 revealed to the world their next generation cycling bot, and I don't think 1477 will be far from their heels. A Torque will be making its debut at Dripping Springs this week, and my prediction is that they go all the way with accurate five-ball trench cycles. Although we haven't seen a climber from them yet, their recent few years suggest they have a solid one. One of the dark horses at this event will be 2881 Lady Cans. 2881 is on the upswing, winning chairmans at the state championship last year. On top of that, they've had a working robot for almost three weeks now, according to their Instagram. 1477's winning alliance won't be complete without 2880 or 2881, and my bet is that 2881 hits lots of shots. 
Lastly, we have two robots that I think can make a deep run in 624 Kryptonite, a perennial Texas powerhouse, and they will be competing at Dripping, Spr at Dripping Springs, although they usually take a few tournaments to get rolling. So let's hope that they are firing up on all four cylinders once they get there. And then there's 1817, the Yano Estacado Robo Raiders. In 2019, 1817 went to, win, went to the finals three times off a strong drivetrain, with one of those times being against 1477. My guess is 2020 won't be any different for them. Colin, what, are we, what is going on outside the state of Texas? Yeah, heading up north to the greater Kansas City Regional, there are several strong teams all playing for a limited number of qualification spots. Almost all of them have been pretty hush about what they've been cooking up for this year's game. But one team has probably been favorite, and that's going to be Team 1986 Titanium. Uh, they have yet to show off any of the robot, but I'm, ex I'm expecting them to continue to dominate the field. Uh, while 1986 might be one of the favorites, there are plenty of strong teams at this event, that, which I could probably easily say could take home a blue banner. Um, first off, I'm going to mention Team 5801, TTC Inspire, coming off of a hot season last year where they teamed up with Titanium at their first event and failed to win, and then the net following week went up against them and emerged victorious. Um, 525 Swart Dogs and Team 3928 Neutrino will be coming down from Iowa, both coming off of great seasons, um, where they won Northern Lights for 525 and winning Calcine Throwdown for Team Neutrino. I'm also looking out for 1987 and 1939, who won the Central Missouri Regional last year. Some other top Missouri teams include 1806 SWAT, 3284 Camden and Laser, and 4522 Scream, who all have the potential to win this event. There's some steep competition for Chairman's Award at this event with 525, 2327, and 3284 all coming off of Chairman's Awards last year. And if you want to look and if you want to be watching a really competitive event, this is the event to look for. Um, I'm really excited to see how this will shake out. All right. Well, I think uh, that's about going to do it for us this evening. Thank you to everyone who took time out to join us today. Don't forget that we will be accepting submissions for Clips of the Week, so please post a Twitch clip you've seen or a short video in the fun Discord by Monday at 5 p.m. Central. Let's see how many Mouth of the South region teams we can get on there, and don't forget to vote for your FRC Top 25 as well. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. Fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know that this is a place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on just about any social medias of your individual preference, including Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. On behalf of myself, Nick, Michael, Colin, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you to all of our moderators in the chat. If you're watching us live, then up next for your viewing pleasure is We the North. Talk to you next week on Mouth of the South. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.